Hi friends, John Willard here, the gentleman poet, storyteller, and NACA contributor, back for another show and more bone chilling truth. It's cold in the Ozarks, but the hot apple cider I hold in my hands tantalizes the senses. Inside our house, soup is simmering. Trips down memory lane, and life gets even better. As sunrise breaks into daylight, I smile. One more sip of apple cider and my day will begin. I'm glad to have had these moments. I'm thankful for the peace of this morning. Hmm. Friends, <clears throat> let me share these quotes about compassion in today's show. Maturity begins to grow when you can sense your concern for others outweighing concern for yourself. And also, I like this. After giving a lecture, a famous psychiatrist was asked, what would you advise a person to do if that person felt a nervous breakdown coming on? Most expected his reply to be, oh, consult a psychiatrist. To their surprise, he replied, lock up your house. Go across the railway tracks. Find someone in need. Do something to help that person. Wow, what a cure. Friends, I say, enlarge my heart with a story and change me by the characters I meet there. So I'm glad to say that the pups and I were up at 4 a.m. this morning. Oh, how good. After food for the pups, oatmeal and coffee for me, we took in the sights and the sounds of the Ozarks. Friends, everybody wants to right the world, but nobody wants to help his neighbor. One afternoon years ago, reporters and officials gathered at a Chicago Railroad station. They were awaiting the arrival of the Nobel Prize winner. He stepped off the train, six foot four, with bush hair and a large mustache. Mm. As cameras flashed, the officials came up, hands outstretched and began telling him how honored they were to meet him. He thanked them, and then looking over their heads, asked if he might be excused for a moment. He walked through the crowd with quick steps until he reached an elderly woman who was having trouble trying to carry two large suitcases. He picked up the bags in his big hands and smiling, escorted the woman to the, a bus. As he helped her aboard, he wished her a safe journey. Hmm. Meanwhile, the crowd tagged along behind him. He turned to them and said, sorry to have kept you waiting. The man was Dr. Albert Schweitzer, the famous doctor who had devoted his life to helping the poorest of the poor in Africa. What compassion. Friends, if someone asked my advice on what to do if you feel a nervous breakdown coming on, I think I would say the same thing. Similarly, go across the railway tracks. Find someone in need and do something 
to help that person. That's the nearest thing to a cure that I know of. You know, a nurse found herself one day attempting to console a grief-stricken mother who had just lost her only child. Hmm. The woman was sitting in a stunned silence, gazing blindly into space as tears streamed down her cheeks. Mrs. Davis, the nurse asked her, have you noticed the little boy sitting in the hall next to your daughter's room? Mrs. Davis had not. There, said the nurse, is a case. She pointed out that the little boy's mother had been brought to the hospital in an ambulance about a week earlier from a shabby one-bedroom apartment where she and the boy had lived since their arrival in the U.S. from Europe three months before. The nurse had learned that the mother and son had no family. They had lost all their people in the old country, and they knew no one in America. They only had each other. Every day, the nurse explained, the little boy kept a vigil at his mother's side, hoping that she would come out of her coma. She never will, the nurse said to Mrs. Davis. Death has taken her along with your daughter. Now, it is my duty, said the nurse, to go out and tell that little fellow at the age of seven that he is all alone in the world. She paused. Then she turned plaintively to Mrs. Davis. I don't suppose, she said hesitantly, that you could go out and tell him for me? Hmm. Mrs. Davis stood up, dried her tears, walked out into the hall, and put her arms around the boy. She had found someone in need, and she did something about it. The next day, she took the homeless boy to her childless home. In the darkest moment of their lives, grief-stricken mother and a little boy became beacons of love and hope for each other. Let me share this quote, The Importance of Compassion. We are not put on this earth to see through one another, but to see one another through. Many things will catch your eye, but only a few will catch your heart. Pursue those. Friends, I'm out of time, but remember, Nagi always said, when you're good to others, you are best to yourself. You can reach me on Twitter at JohnWillard47. And if you want me to come to your event, well, I asked Cora May and Bubba, <laughs> you remember those sweet dogs? They told me they'll travel anywhere with me. Remember, it's not what we gain, but what we give that measures the worth of the life we live. Until next time, friends. <laughs>